These are antiques. These are mantiques. Antique, mantique. These guys sell mantiques. This is their store. I mean, we're picking, we're bringing stuff every day, in and out, in and out, in and out. We're, we're, we're shaking and baking. These are their customers. Give me the rundown on the GMC. This lived in a bar in Ghent in Belgium. Follow Jim and Jeff from 9 to 5 or after hours as they buy, sell, and restore the coolest stuff for the coolest collectors worldwide. Five freaking years and we're finally here. I'm so excited. I can't wait to show my collection. I can't wait to show how everything turned out. These guys are just gonna shit themselves when they see the place. Wow. Mr. Wow. Mr. Cotton. <laughs> Gentlemen. Mr. Cotton. Joe Lear. Joe Lear. Holy crap, Herbert, okay. you did a good job. Wait, wait, wait a minute. This isn't just your regular haircut dive place. No, this is your barbershop. This is an 1880s barbershop experience. Joe and I, first thing we walked in said, that's a very familiar smell to us when we walked Pinault, in. Pinault, 1910. Told you. There you go. <laughs> that's the stuff right that's there, That's the stuff right, right there. Yeah, the I have it there. How much do I owe you? <laughs> that's our it's air amazing. freshener. It's amazing. It's amazing. That's oh, our air freshener. Awesome. You're going to just see everything. And then, I hope you recognize this one, Jim. Oh yeah, the trade simulator. Very Ferris fair. wheel cigar <laughs> trade simulator. The Ferris. Very good. Personal. Let's give this a little whirl here. So you know how this works, right? Is this was a trade stimulator which sat on top of the counter in a cigar store. When he purchased a cigar, he would put a nickel in this for a nickel cigar. More, this has two and three and two on it. So we came up with one, so we got our cigar. But if you hit number two, you would get two cigars. And if you hit number three, you would get three cigars. So it was guaranteed one cigar. You're buying a cigar and having an opportunity to win more. And because we didn't get another cigar, that's where the saying uh, comes from. Close but no cigar. Close, Close but, but no, no cigar. cigar. Exactly, right. and it came from these specific machines. Yeah, I think people forget that you know back in those days you're not plugging anything in, oh. so everything is uh, mechanical and dealing with weights and balances, and well, that's really cool. No, that's a great trade simulator. I, those go out as fast as I can get them. My straight razor collection. Nice. Those are my babies. You know what this would do, right? Oh, it'll take your finger for sure. Oh yeah. In the old days, I mean, this that looks is what like a, bad guys would carry. Like a cleaver. <laughs> well, it looks like a surgical uh, instrument. It's yes. just precision. So it is true. surgical. So when you come on down, you have the pool table. We're not just going to be looking at razors and so on and so forth. And then we come on we over here. Use that while we're getting ready for a shave. Yeah. That's, that's right, the objective. That's, right. that's nice. the whole point. Three by seven. So over here, I moved the slot machines. They're back here now. Hey, uh, why'd you set up the ropes? Well, he's smart to have this up here because he can't let people put their own coins in these machines because if he allows somebody to put a coin in here, that's illegal, that's gambling. So what he needs to do is when his patrons come in, if he would like them to play these machines, he needs to hand them up, uh, some coins. For and amusement they, only. For amusement only. And then they can play all they want, right? And if he chooses to let them take the winnings, he can because that's giving away money. But you just simply can't pull your own money out and try to win some money. That makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, that's kind of the legality on him being in a public public place. Is this your razor collection you've been telling us about? Yes, I have. Wow. 75% of it is here. It didn't all fit. Where did you get this from? Oh, from all over. New York, Alabama, Denver. Start hunting them down, different antique stores. And uh, I've been looking at the- Foreign bottom. pieces too? Yes, uh, there's actually large collections in Japan, China. Yeah. Germans are the ones from Soligen uh, that make the razors. Interesting story, the Camphy brothers are the ones that invented the safety razor. But I have also a Chevette style straight razor, which the wedge blade is actually removable. That's, again, early design. I think there's only three known to exist, and I have one of them here on this plank. When did men start shaving? Actually, it, goes, it dates back all the way to Egypt, where um, the pharaohs were shaved by, obviously, a peasant with a gold straight razor. Oh, interesting. Makes sense because they, they were all clean shaved well, yeah, in the they, movies. They were, yep. okay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> in the movies. <laughs> then you come over here. But the Eureka is one of the companies that was sued, one of the first ones sued by Gillette for copying their design. When I think of Mantique's network, I think of these two pieces. <laughs> yes. And one day Jim told me, he said, you walk into any major player's office and you have that or that sitting on the desk and you know that guy. You're collecting. Yeah. That's it. You know he's legit. He's like, I just, after the big high dollar man, they go, could you tell me about this nice little thing here? What is that, right? 
Oh, you're going to put the finger in there, not a problem. Yes. <laughs> very, very nice. Great stuff. All right, guys, come on in. Oh, nice, Cotton. Hey. There you go. It's like a different chairs world. worked out, man. The chairs, they're the 800 pound ones that I told you about. Memory foam. Joe, you're going to fall asleep. I, I, can, I can feel it. <laughs> That's good. Well, we got this chair ready for you. So, wow. this is my master barber. Mr. Cortez, nice he's going to take Mr. care Cortez. of you. Joe Lear. Let me get the other guys. Joe, this is Krista, Miss Cotton. This is Kevin, Mr. Lara. Nice to meet you. Yeah, so I'm a year into collecting, so it I've made more mistakes than, than I've had wins. And working with Jim and Jeff and Mantiques Network, now I'm in my comfort zone. I have a better idea of what I'm doing. And I'm really... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> What's up, Joe? Yeah, you know, hey, that's right. fascinating, Joe. So, please right. sell us more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was watching the, uh, there was a, commercial for the NBA or something out there and they were Ice-T and all those guys are talking and debating who's the best player in Metal Lock Lemon and all stuff but it reminds me that the barbershop was much more than just a place to go get quaffed and cut it was a place to come and discuss politics religion and sports all the time you probably didn't know Joe that uh, Mr. Cotton here has been associated with boxing as well as I know that you are really? associated with boxing sir I've been in boxing 20 years deep buddy what do you do well I worked for the Boxing Hall of Fame before I expanded on to this. Um, I was actually uh, there when um, Don King was inducted. I think that was what, I think it was 95? I've been working with Don King since 1996. Oh, I As a matter work. of fact, when I did my first boxing tattoo, I don't know if you're familiar with the Golden Palace tattoos, Bernard Hopkins wore it first when he beat Felix Trinidad. Yes, 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 I remember that. Well, after that I was banned from every casino in Vegas. I couldn't show my face anywhere and I had the First Amendment on my side. <laughs> wow. And guess what, I won, I won the right to do it, and the result was millions of dollars went to boxers, and I got the greatest experience of my life to work with them. I'm still a part of boxing. I do a ton of sponsorships. In boxing, you have promoters, managers, trainers. I'm basically the only agent that's ever really been out there and just getting sponsors and doing stuff. But with, with the World Boxing Hall of Fame, and you're talking about in Canastoga, New York, right? Yes. That place is absolutely, if you were there when Don King was inducted, that was a huge one. Uh, actually, the one that I was involved in is the one from here from LA. Okay, I've been to the LA one several times with Jim Lampley and Bernard Hopkins. There you go. Yeah, they do all the presentations over, it's phenomenal. Yes. Tell me some of the stuff you've done with uh, the Boxing Hall of Fame. I, I was the one that was promoting the um, human resources. I got to meet a lot of boxers. I was there at the events when they inducted the, the nominees. I've done oil paintings. I also do that on the side. Really? Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see your work and I'd love to introduce you. Joe, take a look at somebody I've worked with. That's mother Wow. There you go. Wow, that's serious. I've actually seen some of your work then. There's some. It presides in Mexico City. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> and that's where you had me make it, so it, it all Oh, you act, hey, I guess so, because it was on the wall. I travel, exactly. Wow. That was cool. <laughs> right, there's two types of champions. There's a real champ and there's a belt holder. And I've dealt with both. And the real champs have helped me become a better person. It's just so inspiring and working in boxing. And, and everyone who works in boxing, I mean, it's almost like that's their last shot on earth. And to see what they make of it is, is absolutely amazing. You guys are a union, right? <laughs> Did they have unions back then? <laughs> Great job, folks. I gotta tell you guys, like a lot of my friends say, hey, you get to work with pro athletes all day, go to gyms, do that. Yeah, but I couldn't wait on weekend to come do this. There you go. <laughs> you know? And, you and a lot of the things, people will see pictures that I'll post, and they'll see, I'm like the man next to the man, right? Um, and, I, and they love it. But when I go to your, do I go to your showroom? I, I like to sit and work there all day, you know, like, it, it's all relative. I think what you guys do is the coolest job on earth. And I think you're an extension of that. 
This is just great stuff, man. Thank you, Joe. That was a hell of a shave, too. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother. <laughs> no, I'm going to stick around and have a hot dog, though. Of course, you, know you guys, I mean? you you got your people are coming in. Stay here. Really Please nice. do. Yeah. Please do. Awesome. 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 Well, we're finally done. The boys got their haircut. They got their shave. They're ready to go. They're out the door. Now it's your turn to come on down and have that 1880s experience over here at Mr. Cotton's Shaving Parlor. Can't wait to see you. for that classic straight razor shave? Come down to Mr. Cotton Shave Parlor on Whittier Boulevard in Whittier, California, where you'll be surrounded by vintage games as you wait inside their museum for your manicure, shave, and shine. Mr. Cotton Shave Parlor returns a quality and service from the past to give you that authentic 1880s barbershop experience. When we want to shave and cut, we only come to one place in that Mr. Cotton Shave Parlor. So come on down and be pampered in a vintage setting under the care of our master barbers waiting for you.